Give me a second, please. Okay, um, hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, teacher, good evening. Okay. Yes, teacher, good evening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you? Let's do this. Um, let me share the screen with you. Okay, there it is. All right, everybody. Just uh, let's do it. Just give me give me one small second. Okay, I'm back. Okay, everybody, welcome. Um, just going to call your names. When you hear your name, please let me know. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Okay. Okay, Anna. Thank you. Uh, All right. Anna Yanira Mendoza. Anna Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Geraldine Sanchez Recinos. Andrea Geraldine Sanchez Recinos. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Thank you. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Here, teacher. Thank you. Um, Selina Ivet Gutierrez Osorio. Selina Ivet Gutierrez Osorio. Okay, Dennis Isaías Gómez. Present teacher, present. Thank you. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you. Eric Ernesto, no, I don't think so. Okay, Erika Maidel Antonio. Erika Maidel Antonio Flores. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Okay, just a moment. All right, the next one. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Is here, teacher. Thank you. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortes. Jose Eraidin Enriquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Present teacher. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Miguel Ángel Quintanilla Tejada. Miguel Ángel Quintanilla Tejada. Selena says present. Okay, Selena. Let me present teacher, Miguel Ángel Quintanilla. Okay, thank you. Miguel Ángel, thank present you very teacher, much. Ana Yanira Mendoza. Ana Yanira, okay, thank you. Okay, so Ana Yanira, Miguel, and Selena, I just uh, took your attendance. Nadia Isolina Rodriguez. 
Present teacher. Thank you. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. Ronald Antonio Luna López. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Antonio Hernández Torres. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay. Just calling some of the names again. Alicia Guadalupe Hernández. Alicia Guadalupe Hernández. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez. Present, teacher, present. Thank you. Blanca Marisol Vargas. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Erika Maidel Antonio Flores. Erika Maidel Antonio. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Francisco Alberto Lemus. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana. Maritza Isabel Méndez. Maritza Isabel Méndez. Ok. All right, um, let's begin. Everybody, take a look. It's uh, Inglés Pre Avanzado, Módulo 1, and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service once again. This is session 15, and today is March 22nd of 2023. Let's do this. Here's what we're going to do. We First of all, we have a review on the grammar that we studied yesterday, okay? And that is grammar focus right here, noun phrases containing relative clauses. So you know the relative clauses are those that begin with that, which or who, okay? So now we're talking about noun, noun phrases containing relative clauses. For example, you can say one thing that I would really miss. So that I would really miss is the relative clause. But if you say one thing that I would really miss, that is a noun phrase containing a relative clause, okay? So you can use noun phrases containing relative clauses as subjects like this one, one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking. And also you can use them as objects and you can say my mom's cooking is one thing that I would really miss. We have two chat entries right here, Maritza and Francisco. Okay, I'm taking your attendance, Maritza can find you here. Okay, Maritza is here and also Francisco Alberto Lemos. Thank you both. Okay, good evening. All right, so a subject, you can say something that I'd be nervous about is making new friends. Or you can say making new friends is something I'd be nervous about. Now, something that we need to remember is that um, if you use an action, like in this case, making new friends as a subject or as the object of a verb, you have to use the gerund form. That is the ing form like this especially if it comes at the beginning. Making new friends is something that I'd be nervous about. That's as an object, okay? Using this, something that I'd be nervous about. Um, the next one, two people that or who I would email every day are my parents. Or you can say my parents are two people that I would or which who I would email every day. So nothing new, same thing we studied yesterday. So I want you to take a look at this. Uh, we solved this yesterday, ah, but we didn't finish now that I remember. Okay, uh, we just started, but we couldn't finish because um, we ran out of time. So we need to continue today. So uh, we did number one. One thing I'd definitely be fascinated by is, number two is something I really miss. Number three, two things I'd be homesick for are, okay, who wants to participate? That goes to number three. Alicia says present. Okay, Alicia, thank you very much. Welcome. All right, what about number three? Who wants to participate? Erica says present also. Thank you, Erica. Welcome. Okay, what about number three? Who wants to, who wants to say something? Vamos, participemos. Number three, two things I'd, I'd be homesick for are, you can say my friends, my family, my favorite food, my room at home, okay, my my classmates, okay, Boris. Okay, Boris. Okay. 
Number three, teacher. Yes, number three, please. Uh, two things uh, I be hunting for art. Um, um, not uh, not understanding people and trying new foods. And trying new food. Well, normally when you're homesick about something, you're talking about something that you miss. Okay. And uh -huh, trying new food is... Okay, not, okay. Probably, uh -huh. uh, it's my family and my friends. My family and friends. Okay, you can totally say that. Okay, thank you, Boris. Erica, okay. can you help us with number four? Two things I'd be anxious about. And also okay. remember, um, everybody, remember that um, you have a list right here. You have a list, but you don't necessarily have to use the list. You can say other things if you want, okay? Maybe some idea that is not in this list, you can also say it, no problem. Erica, please, number four. Okay. Um, getting lost in a new city, and speaking a new language are two things I'd be anxious about. Okay, good. Getting lost in a new city and speaking a new language are two things I'd be anxious about. Okay, cool. Okay, nice. Um, what about number five? Something that will depress me. What will depress you? Okay, so what can you say? Here, I need a volunteer. Dennis. Not being able to play in my band, you say. <laughs> Um, something that would depress me is uh, being away from my home, from home, mm -hmm. and not understanding people. Being away from home and not understanding people. Okay, okay, sounds sounds nice. And, and not playing with my band. And not playing with my band with Saul. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, totally. Okay, uh, Boris, uh, did you want to participate again, or is your hand up? No, sorry, I. You, uh, you forgot to. Let, I forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to okay. lower your hand. Right now. Okay. Yeah, ya, ya le dolía la mano de tener la red. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. No, no problem. Okay. What about uh, number six? Who wants to try this one? Number six, please. Me, teacher. Who is me? Ah, it is. Okay, it is. Okay. Iris. Speaking a new language is a uh, is. One thing that I might be embarrassed about. Uh, speaking a new language is one thing that I might be embarrassed about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's it's a bit embarrassing to try to speak a new language. Right. I understand that. Okay. That sounds good. Noemi Alicia, what about number seven? Number seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perdón, teacher, no leo. Number seven. The most uncomfortable thing would be uh, getting lost in the new city. Mm -hmm. The most uncomfortable thing would be getting lost in the new city, especially at night. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you, Noemi. Number eight. Who wants to try? Raise your hand, please. We have a chat entry right here, who just joined us. Getting lost in a new city, says Ana Filomena. Yeah, okay, <laughs> it's uh, like Noemi's idea. Yeah, getting lost in a city, especially if it's a big city. That sounds horrible. I hear noise, uh-oh, I think it's about to rain here. That's not good news. Okay, what about number eight? Uh, is something from home that I will never miss? Okay, who wants to, what about number eight? What is something from home that you will never miss? Algo que usted no extrañaría. Okay, Maritza. Maritza? Uh, hi, um, your microphone seems to be active, but I can't hear you. Can you hear Maritza? No, teacher. No, we, we can't hear you, Maritza. Sorry. Uh, 
Sorry, Maritza, we, we can't hear you. Uh, Katia? Okay, teacher, the eight. Yeah, number eight. Okay. Um, getting sick is something from home that I have never missed. Getting sick is something from home that I've never missed. Okay, yeah. Yes, teacher. Like getting the flu. Although if you, basically you can get sick <laughs> yes. anywhere in the world, but yeah, okay, I guess that's something from home that you will never miss. But what about this one? Okay, a challenge for everybody. What can you say to complete number eight that is different, something that is not in the list? Because in the list, I don't see anything that's... Um, I don't see any phrases that are a good fit for this. Jose, what can you tell us? Fighting with my brother is something from home that I've never met. Fighting with your brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, that's something that you will never miss. Okay, all right. Okay, it sounds like you fight a lot with your brother. <laughs> okay. Um, I will say, for example, um, what's something that I would never miss from El Salvador? Let's see, um, the crime rate, okay? The crime rate is something that I will never miss from Salvador, right? There, there's a lot of, there are a lot of criminals in here. We have some chat entries right here. Let's see, your pet, okay? Ah, uh, but Ana Filomena says also my pet, but I believe you are talking about, um, a different one, but okay. Uh, thank you, Ana Filomena. Uh, Katia, what do you have? Fisher, maybe the egg, El Mahawal Beach is something from, <laughs> is something from home that I never missed. Don't you like the Mahawal Beach? No. No, okay. I think it's El a, a lot of people, teacher. Yeah, but it depends on when you go. For example, if you go during the Easter week, which is in two weeks from now, yeah, there are lots of people. Okay. Yeah, on vacation. Mostly. For me, always. It's always like that. There are people, sure. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe, maybe. I haven't been there in a really long time. So I don't know. Okay. Uh, Dennis. I got an, uh, another one. For number eight? Um, for, for the number eight. Okay. Uh, doing laundry is something from home that I'd never met. Okay. Although I think you also would have to, you know, do laundry if you go to a different country, right? But maybe you can, you can go to a, you know, public laundry place. Okay. And pay a little bit for that. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I also hate doing the laundry. I understand. Um, what about number nine? Okay. Which is one thing I'd be insecure about. Boris. Teacher, I had an opinion from the, the last question. Number eight, the previous yes. one. Okay. The previous. It's something mm -hmm. from home that I never miss is staying in the line when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> Waiting in line when you go to, to the bathroom is something yeah. from, from home that you'd never miss. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, the more bathrooms you have, the better, right? So, but but in the Salvador, most most houses only have one. So when you have only one, you have to wait. You have to be patient. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Okay, what about number nine? One thing I'd be insecure about is, well, what, what would that be? Mm-hmm. Number nine. Nobody wants to participate. Maybe this one is a bit difficult. Boris. I think that the the costume t-shirt. One thing I've been insecure about is the costume. The, the new customs and traditions of the place you're going to. Yeah, the new uh -huh. custom and tradition that the place. So, uh, basically, so the, the culture. The culture, yeah. Okay, okay, that sounds good. All right, that will be one thing you'd be insecure about. Okay, thank you, Boris. And number 10, are two things I'll be very enthusiastic about. What are those two things? This one is easier. Okay, Noemi Alicia. Uh, in my case, uh, speaking a new language in my favorite truth. 
Speaking a new language and my favorite food are two things that I'd be enthusiastic about. Okay, well, if you find your 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 favorite food in the in the country you're going to, I guess that's the case. Okay, and speaking a new a new uh, language. Okay, yeah, especially if it's English, the English language that would be nice to practice. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> that's the spirit. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, everybody, thank you. Thank you very much for your participation. Okay, we couldn't finish this exercise yesterday, so we're doing it today. But now we have this other thing. Okay, this is not in the manual. This is not in the platform, but something that uh, it's, it's good exercise. Respond to the questions about traveling. Write complete sentences using one thing, the thing or the only thing or something. You have two examples. Well, it's basically the same examples. It's, I mean, it's one example with two different answers. Would you be nervous about being far away from your family? You can say, one thing that I'll be nervous about is being away from my family. Alternatively, you can say, being away from my family is something that I'd be comfor comfortable with, okay? So um, what can you say in these situations? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? I'm going to give you a second example you have here something I will feel insecure about is traveling alone. Or you can say traveling alone is something I'll feel insecure about. Number three, would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? What can you say here? Following the examples right there. It's the same idea, but this time you have to formulate the whole thing. Come on, come on, don't be shy. What's that, Aiden? Thank you. Uh, something I'd be enthusiastic about is making new friends. Okay, something I'd be enthusiastic about is making new friends. Is there an alternative way of saying this, Jose? Uh, making new friends is something I'd, I would be enthusiastic about. Yeah, totally. So something I'd be enthusiastic about is making new friends or making new friends is something I'd be enthusiastic about. Very good. Thank you, Jose. What about number four? Would you be curious about the way people live in other places? Who knows this one? Please raise your hand. Um, in my case, um, something mm -hmm. I'd be... I'd be curious about the way people lie in the other place. Okay, so you say something I'd be curious about. Falta una palabra ahí, chiquita. Mm -hmm. Something I'll be curious about. Mm, I don't know, teacher. Take a look at the other ones. What word follows about? Verbo to be, teacher. The verb be, exactly. So yes. you say, uh -huh, yes. is. Uh -huh. So wh what do we have? Something I'd be curious about is the way people live in the other place. Okay, yeah. Something I'd be curious about is the way people live in other places. Or the way people live in other places is something I'd be curious about. Very good. Thank you, Nadia. And also, Iris, thank you for your participation. Saul wants to participate. Number five, Saul. All yours. Okay. Something I'd be anxious about is spending too much money. Or? Or spending too much money is something I would, I'd be anxious about. Okay. Something I'd be anxious about is spending too much money or spending too much money is something I'd be anxious about. I'm sorry that I didn't have enough space for the whole answer, but you get the idea. Okay, great. Very good. Um, then we have this discussion, going abroad. You have group work, read the questions, think of two more questions to add to the list. You don't need to think of two more questions, but something that I would like you to do is, I just want you to discuss this. We're going to do it openly. So I'm going to ask for volunteers and I want you to tell me your, your opinions, your most honest opinions. Take turns asking and answering the questions in groups. So the first question is, if you could live in a foreign country, what country would you like to live in 
and why. Now imagine this, imagine that you could choose any country in the world, any country, where would you like to go to and settle in? And why? Okay, so again, if you could live, remember, it's not just visit the place. No, we're not talking about visiting. We're not talking about being uh, a visitor, being a, a, a tourist. We're talking about becoming a resident, you know, moving to that country. So if you could live in a foreign country, what country would you like to live in and why? I need a volunteer. What country would that be? I'll give you an idea, right? If I could live in any country in the world, I would probably go to New Zealand. I hear that when I've seen, and I've seen also videos that New Zealand is beautiful. It's a very, very beautiful country. And uh, if I could probably choose any city, I would go to Wellington, Wellington in New Zealand, because it's a very special city. It's the windiest city in the world. There's a lot of wind. Okay, if you see videos about Wellington when it's windy, you will be impressed. You know, there's wind blowing at high speeds and I like wind. I really like wind. So that's probably where I would like to go to. Also, people speak, they speak English there. Okay, with a British accent, but they speak English. So that will be a good opportunity for me to practice the language. Jose, what can you tell us? If you could live in a foreign country, what country would you like to live in and why? Teacher, I would like to live in Switzerland. In Switzerland. Why would you like to live in Switzerland? Yes, because I have heard that it's a country with a good economic situation and the rates of poverty are very, well, are almost inexistent. Okay. Uh, and, uh, well... I had the opportunity to 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 speak with with uh, with with Switzerland guys, mm -hmm. and they told me that uh, well, Swiss, in the, Swiss, in the, Swiss people, uh, Swiss people, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and they told me that um, poverty is almost inexistent there, mm -hmm. and the nature. Uh, well, there's a lot of uh, nature zones mm -hmm. where you can go with your family and have a good day. Okay. Um, also, uh, uh, they speak four languages. What languages are those? French, English, uh, Germany, German, 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 uh, German, German? Uh, German, and I don't remember the other one, but they speak four languages. Okay. And well, they told me a lot of good things mm -hmm. and the the salaries are very very good. Okay, sounds like a great place to live in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hmm. I would like to live there. I'm probably going to reevaluate, you know, living in New Zealand. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Jose. That was very good. Anyone else? Does any does anyone else would like? I mean, would anyone else like to 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 answer this question? Dennis. Yeah, teacher. Uh, one country that I like to live in is Russia because uh, I am trapped Russia. by the Russia. Okay. Yeah. Because I am trapped by the Russian women, and oh. I like the <laughs> and I like the the Russian history. Okay. And, and, and always I wanted to to visit that country, but it's 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 so expensive. Oh yeah, definitely. It's the biggest country in the world, by the way. Okay. Although, well, um, right now might not be the best moment because it's it's at war, okay? <laughs> Russia is at war. But yeah, okay, Russia sounds like a good thing. So you, you're attracted by the women, okay? That sounds good. Okay. Um, Daisy, uh, do you want to answer number one or would you like to continue with number two? I'm scored one. Number one, okay, Daisy, go ahead, please. Yes. I I would like to live in the country Malta. Malta. 
Yes. Where is uh, that? It, it's, a, it's a popular tourist destination. Mm -hmm. uh, with its work climate. Is it in Europe? Uh, work? No, no, uh, the, the country. Is it in Europe? Yes. Okay, in Europe. Yes. Uh, in histo historical monuments. There are lots it's of historical country. monuments. Okay, it's a beautiful country. I don't know much about that country, actually. Uh, okay, so I'll probably have to investigate a little bit. Now, if you say that that's the, the country you would like to live in, must be a very nice place. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, be because of the time, let's continue with number two. Now, it's the opposite question. What country wouldn't you like to live in and why? I think I know the answer, but okay. <laughs> what country wouldn't you like to live in and why? This is like the opposite from question number one. There's a chat entry. Then it says in a salad. Oh, come on, Dennis. <laughs> oh, come on. You got to love your country, man. <laughs> okay, Boris. Well, um, I don't want to live in Ukraine. In, you know, in Ukraine, especially right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds especially like right a... now. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, they work. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Ukraine is not uh -huh. a good place to live in right now. Okay. But hopefully the situation will change. Okay. Ana Yanira. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, one country I wouldn't like to live in is North Korea. North Korea. I knew, I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> okay, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I wouldn't because like to live there. Nah. <laughs> uh -huh. It's a crazy, it's a crazy country. Uh, all the things are pro pro prohibited. Prohibited. Pro repeat, please. Prohibited. Prohibited. Mm -hmm. Everything is forbidden. Everything and is prohibited. It's hard to know all the prohibitions all the what sorry eh, 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 todas las prohibiciones ah, all the prohibitions yeah absolutely uh -huh. it is is hard to to know all of them mm -hmm. and maybe i could do anything that is a, is a fault mm -hmm. yeah uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, North Korea is a, it's a no no, definitely. Okay, but South Korea, what about South Korea? Would you like to live in South Korea? That sounds nice. Okay, South Korea looks cool. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We have a chat entry right here. Uh, Daisy says Colombia. Okay, Daisy, why not Colombia? And then Katia Graciela is going to help us. So Daisy says Colombia. Colombia. Colombia is beautiful, somebody says. I, I believe Alejandro said that. Drop traffic. Uh, yeah, drug there's a lot of traffic. yeah drug trafficking in Colombia. Scars. That is true. Okay. Same El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, basically in all this region. Okay, it's it's like a bridge for you know crime. Okay, so okay, Colombia, they say it's not a good place to live in. Although there are some very beautiful places in Colombia, particularly the beaches, like when you go to um, Medellin. Medellin. Medellin, okay, that's a city, okay. Um, um, if you go to Cartagena, for example, that would be very nice, okay, to see the beach and all that. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool, okay. <laughs> I've never been to Colombia, but I have seen Betty La Fea, so looks nice. <laughs> okay, Katia. But the Colombia handsome men. Yeah. <laughs> there, are, there are handsome men in Colombia, you say. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I would, I would like live in Qatar, teacher, because you would, you would the like or wouldn't culture, the culture wouldn't. Ah, okay. Wouldn't. Okay. Yes, because the men getting married uh, seven, why? Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Sounds sounds good. Yes. But the the culture mm -hmm. is is very 
only for the woman. Okay, so it's not good for women. Okay, um, let's say that some of women's rights are restricted yes. in Qatar. Basically, in all the Middle East, is the same story. So yeah, okay, yeah. I agree. But they hosted the World Cup. Okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> Alejandro Quintanilla. Okay. <laughs> Thank sure. you, Katia. It's correct if um, the traduction of the translation, uh, translation, okay, of mm -hmm. um, perception is what is the the, the word perception? Perception. Perception. Okay, so about Colombia, it's more mm -hmm. difficult to change perception mm -hmm. than uh, uh, the reality. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the the reality in Colombia is very, 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 very different. Have you been to Colombia before? before? Excuse me. Have you been to Colombia before? Yes, this year. Okay. So the reality is very, very, very different. Uh, in in com comparison. In comparison. In comparison with the perception of the ah. of people. Yes. Okay. Very okay. Good. So, so basically, there's a stigma on Colombia. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since, okay. since the eighties, eighties, uh, decade. Deca uh, decade. Decade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eighties decade. All right. Then, yes. Okay. So, um, so th there's basically bad reputation Colombia has, but it's not that bad. It's actually pretty cool. Alejandro says. Yes. Okay, thank you, Alejandro. We have a chat entry. Um, all right, uh, Boris. Boris wants to say something. Alicia wants to say something. I, I, I want to add something uh, that my partner said. Uh, I think that uh, Colombia, many people, Joshua book, uh, uh, I discovered. Mm -hmm. um, for that, people uh, think that it's a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. But I heard, I heard too that it's a it's a good place to visit. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I would love to go there. I would really like to go there. I, I have a friend who has been to Colombia, and he says it's a very nice place. Noemi wants to say something. Thank you, Boris. Uh, yes, teacher. Uh, Google, what's country? Google. Would you like? Wouldn't. In my case, uh -huh. wouldn't uh -huh. you like? In my case, is Afghanistan. Afghanistan. <laughs> I I oh, don't yeah. like it, the Taliban's country. Oh no no <laughs> no me neither. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you wouldn't like to go to to Afghanistan? No 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 no, it's not a good idea. Definitely. Okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> we all agree on that. Chat entry right here. Uh, I know a person who prefers to live in El Salvador than in Colombia. Well, there was Aniceto Molina, right? I guess preferred El Salvador to Colombia, <laughs> but he passed away. Okay. So um, what about this? Um, the next one, who is the person who would, sorry, who is the person you would most like to go abroad with? If you had the opportunity to travel, Probably not live, just travel, go abroad, go to other countries, and you have the opportunity to go with one person, then who would that person be? Not everybody at the same time, please. <laughs> uh -huh. Who wants to participate? Who is the person you would most like to go abroad with? Jose Raibin. Teacher, I always travel with my friends. With your friends, okay. Is yeah. there a, fr a friend in particular that you um, prefer? Your best friend, maybe? No. Not really? No, all of them are good people. And okay, and good even companions. Even when someone cannot, cannot join us, mm -hmm. well, we always enjoy uh, wherever who goes with me. Okay, okay, you always enjoy the company. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Okay, thank you, Jose. Uh, someone else, one more person to answer this. Who is the person you will most like to go abroad with? I'm very thirsty tonight. Okay, Boris. Being honest, teacher, uh, with my wife. With your wife? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> yeah, if you're married, you have to go with your with your spouse. Okay, so yeah, it makes sense. Okay, thank you, Boris. Okay, next question. What is something you will never travel without? But don't tell me my cell phone because that's obvious. Okay, yeah, nobody wants to be away from the phone. So what is something that you will never travel without? But don't tell me your cell phone because that's, I know that's everybody's answer. Something else. What is that? Mm hmm What's something you will never travel without? ¿Qué es algo sino que usted nunca trabaría? Nunca viajaría, pero <laughs> combiné viajaría con travel. Trabaría. Ok, algo sin, aquello, sin que usted, digamos, nunca podría viajar. José de Raibín, and then Katia Graciela, and then Noemi Alicia. Ok, pero no bajen la manita porque si no después me olvida. <laughs> no, teacher, no, no, no. <laughs> ok, ok. So, okay. José. Uh, teacher, something I would never travel without is the other end. The other end. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other end. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Noemi, Alicia, what's something you would never travel without? Uh, is the, the money in my phone? Your money and your phone. Okay, well, we said no phones mentioned, but okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, Katia and then Erica. No, 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 that's time. Okay, Erica and then Boris. Erica. Uh, yes, teacher. Sometimes I never travel without my tennis. You mean your shoes? Uh -huh, my, my shoes. Ah, okay, your sneakers. My sports shoes. <laughs> okay, your sports shoes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea, especially if you go to a different country and you need to walk a lot. It's better to, you know, take some yeah. casual, comfortable shoes. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Erica. Boris, what's something you never travel without? Well, uh, something that I never travel without is my medicine. Your medicine. Okay, yeah, it's important. Okay, especially if you're taking medicine that um, you need to keep you know, consuming, okay, so yeah, definitely it's something that you cannot travel without. Dennis, how about you? In my case, something I never travel without is a bottle of water. A bottle of water, okay, yeah, it sounds like a very good idea, bottle of water. Nadia Rodriguez, how about you? I never travel without my passport. Your passport, oh yeah, absolutely. But what if you go to another country where you don't need a passport, like Guatemala, for example? If you go to Guatemala, you don't need a passport. <laughs> but yeah, I understand. I get the idea. Okay, um, very good, everybody. Uh, let's continue. Because of the time, what time is it? 8.43. We're going to skip this question because it's who is the person you would email first after arriving somewhere new? Mm, I don't think we will want to email anyone, okay? Probably send a message or something using the phone. Daisy says, credit card. Yeah, absolutely. Anna Filomena says, my my allergy pills. Okay. And Anna Yanira wants to say something. Uh, teacher, I have a question. What's your question? Uh, could you explain me, please? Um, in this case, all of the yellow, yellow uh, we use living abroad with concerns about trouble without. Uh, in normal sentences, I could think that uh, it's incomplete. The ah, sentence because, mm -hmm. uh -huh, because in, with, about, without uh, prepositions, yes, are at the end mm -hmm. because they are questions. Maybe, please. Normally, in a question, you use the preposition at the end. I'll give you an example. Imagine that you say, I am from Santa Ana. Okay, here's the preposition, from. Me too. Okay. Ah, really? Okay. No, it's an example. I'm not really from Santa Ana, mm -hmm. but okay, you're from Santa Ana. So I will say, all right, Ana Janira is from Santa Ana. Okay, but if I want to ask a question and I don't know where you're from, then I have to say, where is... 
Ana, Yanira, from. You see the preposition is at the end. Because normally in questions, you use prepositions at the end. Mm -hmm. This is standard English. If you want to be very formal, but very, very formal, and most people don't speak like this, but it's possible, you can mm -hmm. say, from where is Ana Yanira? Mm -hmm. This is possible, but not very common because it's considered very formal English. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Another yeah. Another example, teacher, please. Another example. Okay, let's yeah, see. With a broad, a broad width. A broad width. Do you have this? A broad width. Okay, who is the person you will most like to go abroad with? Okay, so I can say here. I would like to go abroad with my friend uh, Rosa, for example. Okay, I would like to go abroad with my friend Rosa. So with is a preposition. After a preposition, you need an object. The object mm -hmm. is my friend Rosa. But again, mm -hmm. because you are asking a question, in this case, the preposition usually goes at the end. And then you say, who is someone you would like to go abroad? And then preposition at the end, with. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. All the time. Yeah, okay, if you have a preposition, mm -hmm. Yeah, normally the preposition will go at the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, teacher. Except mm. when you're using where, okay? When you're using where, the preposition is not necessary. For example, I say, I, uh, you say, um, uh, Carlos lives in San Jacinto, okay? But then you want to ask a question, you say, where does Carlos live in this case you don't say in because it's unnecessary but normally only when the question begins with where in other cases normally you will have to use a preposition mm -hmm. okay Tisha. thank okay. you okay you're welcome okay so um what's next ah what would be your two greatest concerns about living abroad who can tell me what will be your two greatest concerns? Su mayores preocupaciones, right? What will be your two greatest concerns about living abroad? In my case, that will be not being able to adapt to a new culture will be a very big concern in my case. And also not being able to communicate effectively with other people would also be a great concern of mine, okay? So it's basically communication and culture in my case. But what about you? What would be, you know, your two greatest concerns about living in a different country? I would love to know. Raise your hand if you want to participate, please. Boris. Uh, maybe the unfriendly people. Um... The other can be could be uh, the food teacher. The food, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you I know... go to Thailand, I ah. be very worried. <laughs> ah, really? Don't you like Thai food? No. <laughs> I have never tried it. So, you know, I, I've met people who have tried Thai food and they say it's really good. But this is the first time uh, somebody tells me that it's bad. You know. Um, do, do you like Chinese food? I like Chinese food. But the Chinese food that you can buy in El Salvador. But, but I have only a friend. The chow, only, only the chow mein. <laughs> only the chow mein. Okay. All right. But well, Chinese food is Chinese food. But you know, I have a friend who loves Chinese food. He loves Chinese food. It's probably one of his favorite types of food. But then from work, he was sent to China for some training. And that was right before the beginning of the pandemic. Okay, so he was very lucky he didn't get COVID. <laughs> so he was sent about two or three months before the pandemic began. He went to China. And then when he came back, he told me, he said this, okay, this, these are not my words. He said this, he said, hey, you know, the food in China is horrible, he said. And I asked him, 
how is that possible? You love Chinese food. And he said, yeah, I love Chinese food, but the Salvadoran Chinese food, the Chinese food that you eat here in the Salvador is good. But if you eat the Chinese food from China, it's just horrible. Everything is disgusting, he said. I was surprised when I heard that. I cannot imagine this situation, but well, everybody's different, okay? Maybe he found it really bad. Maybe another person will go to China and they'll find it good. I have no idea, okay? But according to my friend, the food was the worst thing about his stay in China. He said that everything is very, very nice, but the food, he said, was just terrible. He said that, okay? I heard, but, I heard teacher that they uh, eat dogs, but <laughs> I don't know what kind of snake, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I heard they eat a lot of animals, not only dogs, but yeah. Jose wanted to participate. Yes, I have heard that uh, the difference is because in China they don't they don't eat a lot of salt and a lot of condiments. Mm -hmm. That's why the Chinese food has been adapted mm -hmm. to fit into the into El Salvador mm -hmm. because because we have a different uh, different taste of the mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. It's it been adapted. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that could be. That could totally be. He also told me that Chinese food is very spicy, he says, but incredibly spicy. I have no idea. But yeah, maybe what Jose says is true. Maybe they basically have adapted the flavor to the condiments and, and, and uh, other ingredients that can be found on this side of the world. Maybe. Okay. Maybe that's why it's different. But if that's the case, I'm glad that's the case because I, I, I really like Chinese food. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, final question. Okay, what is the thing you would enjoy the most about living abroad? If you had the opportunity to go and live in a different country, what do you think will be the thing that you would enjoy the most? Jose. Teacher, uh, knowing new places. Mm -hmm. Like visiting new places, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Visiting new places and meeting new people. Visiting new places and meeting new people. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds exciting. Okay, Boris. Uh, the views, teacher. The bill, the, the what? <laughs> the, view, the views, the views. Is that what you will be, what you will enjoy the most about living in a new country? Yeah, maybe if I uh, live in China, I can ah. appreciate the, uh, the world. The big world, yeah. Ah, okay. You mean the, the buildings? Yeah. Ah, I heard the bills. Okay, no, the buildings. Okay, all right, the no, buildings. No, no, I, I say the views, the views. Ah, the views. Okay, so yeah. you mean the, the landscapes, all the landmarks in the other countries? Okay, okay, sounds great. Like you, you told me if you were in China, you would be able to see the, the Great Wall of China in all its splendor. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, that's something that I would definitely enjoy uh, about uh, living in a different country. You know, something that I would like to do, I would probably like to go to Scotland and visit some castles. You know, some castles in Scotland are pretty cool looking and the historical value they have is pretty high. So that sounds to me like a good deal. Okay, anyone else? What What is the thing you will enjoy the most about living abroad? We have a new message right here. The culture, the food, says Anna Filomena. Yeah, well, that's for sure. But um, uh, anyone else? What's the thing you will enjoy most about living abroad? What do you have? Nobody wants to participate. Okay, Katia, Katia, Graciela, Juan de Candraya. <laughs> The dolphin. The dolphins. The animals they share. The dolphins. Dolphins. Okay. Dolphins and panda. Dolphins and pandas. Okay. Well. Yes. And, I think and if, koala. if and koalas. Okay. Well, if yes. you want to see, well, maybe if you go to a big zoo, maybe in Mexico, you can find all those. I I know someone who went to Mexico. And uh, she says she had the opportunity to interact with a with a panda because the panda is her favorite animal. And she said that she paid like $80 oh. or so, about $80. Oh. 
And if you pay $80 at a specific zoo in Mexico, you have the opportunity to touch the panda, which oh. I would not, I, I would never do because pandas are very, very strong. Okay. If they grab Where you, they okay. oh, yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Okay. They're beautiful looking, but, um, but they're, they can be dangerous because they're very strong, very strong animals. Okay. If they grab you, yes, you they can can. get in trouble. Okay. So I see in the, the, very tranquilo. I don't know what is the meaning tranquilo in English. Uh, <laughs> how do you say tranquilo in English, teacher? You say uh, mild-mannered. They are very yes. mild-mannered. Okay, they look mild-mannered, but but when they get angry, okay, they, they can be dangerous. Okay. Teacher, could be quiet? Uh, quiet is more like, like Quiet this. apply for... Per, per, just for no, uh, for person or for animals too? For animals too, but quiet means that it doesn't make much noise. Okay, that's the meaning of quiet. So I will say mild mannered. Okay. That's the word I will use. Okay. Tranquilo. Okay. So that's mild manner. Okay, be sure. Right, not aggressive, but that's how they look. But in reality, <laughs> they can be quite aggressive. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Katia. Noemi. Thank you, Tisher. You're welcome. welcome. Maybe passive. I'm sorry. I could enjoy teacher the the beach, the mountains. The beaches, and, the mountains, okay. And especially the people. Especially the people. Okay. Okay, that sounds cool. Although I guess it depends on the country you go to. <laughs> but yeah. Some um let's see. I've heard that, again, speaking of New Zealand, the country that I would like to go and visit and probably even live in, I've heard that the the, the people from New Zealand are very nice, but also depends on the region, okay? Some people are more friendly than others. So that's it. Okay, um, that's that's pretty cool. Everybody, thank you for participating. Right now, just let me see if uh, there's anything else that we can do right here. Um, there's a snapshot, but I don't want to go there because that's pretty much like um, the beginning of t tomorrow's class. Well, no, let's do it. We still have like five minutes, so we can do this. Snapshot, different costumes. Let's take a look. So uh, you're going to read some of the different costumes in, in, in different countries. Okay, so let's see if they're different from the ones we have here. Canada. Okay, so Canada. Who can help me read this? Need a volunteer to help me read this, please. Jenny Elizabeth. And then, Dennis, you go with Indonesia. Okay. If you are invited for a meal, you should arrive on time, not early or late. Uh huh. In Canada, if you're invited for a meal, you should arrive on time, not early or late. If they told you at seven, then you are at the door at seven. If you arrive at 645, that's that's not nice. If you arrive at 715, okay, that's not nice either. So apparently these people take punctuality very seriously. So um, that's Canada. Okay, just like the same, the, the, same, the same, the same, exactly the same. No difference. No difference at all. The same thing. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Dennis, Indonesia. What about Indonesia? Indonesia, never point to anything with your foot. Never point to anything with your foot. Nunca le apunte a nada con su pie. <laughs> Use your hand, never your foot. Although I never see people pointing at anything with the food in the, in the food in the Salvador, but okay. Apparently in Indonesia, this is something you never do. Probably some not, not something you will be worried about, okay. Salvador is we're gonna do this. It's something weird. Yeah, it's something weird. But if you think about it, in El Salvador, we do something weird too. Have you noticed that in El Salvador we point at things with the mouth? You go like this. Okay. You do that. In El Salvador, we, we point at things with the mouth, okay, which is a little weird, but we do it all the time. Okay. Maybe in other countries it is it is commonplace, you know, just pointing at things with the foot. Something that we never do in El Salvador. Okay, or at least I've never seen anyone doing. All right, so <laughs> the next one. Thank you, Dennis. What about uh, France? I need a volunteer who can help me read this.
Katia. Okay, teacher. Friends, when eating out, keep both hands on or above the table. Yes, when eating out, that means when you go and eat in a restaurant, keep both hands on or above the table, never under the table. Apparently, for the French, this is not nice. This is not polite. So you have to keep your hands on the table or above the table, right? But never under the table. OK. Um, thank you very much. What about the next one? South Korea. OK, what about South Korea? What can you say? Raise your hand if you want to help me read this. No, me. South Korea, always use bad hands to pass something to an older person. Yeah, always use both hands to pass something to an older person. So if you want to give someone something and you only use one hand, that's a problem. You have to use both hands and then you give it to an older person. That's the etiquette. Okay, so never like this. No, you always have to do it using both hands. Okay, <laughs> traditions. What about Egypt? What about Egypt? Alejandro and then Iris. Iris, you'll help me read the last one. Uh, your microphone, Alejandro. Okay. Don't eat anything with your left hand. Okay, you have that. In Egypt, don't eat anything with your left hand. So if you want to eat, use your right hand, never your yes. left hand. Okay. Yes. There is another there is another country in in this uh, uh, area mm -hmm. that follow this rule too. What what country is that? Do you know? Uh, Arabia Saudita. Um, Saudi Saudi Arabia. Excuse me. Sa Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, Qatar and another countries. Mm -hmm. um, and and do you, uh, around, around around okay. Around, uh, yes. Do you know why? Yes, I know why. Ah, can you can you explain? The, yes, the reason is that they say uh, the reason is that they eat with the hands. They don't use um, uh, uh, forks. Forks, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, they said that you can eat with the hand that you clean your ass. <laughs> And they clean their ass with the left hand, so they food, that's what I they heard eat with, the, with their right hand. Yes, that's so the yeah, that's so I, that, I have a friend, I have a friend mm. who was uh, uh regañado by that. I uh, really, so why do you eat with the left hand, man? Eh? Because and I'm left handed, you say, right? Okay, yes, I, I am surdo. What's the problem? Oh, yeah, okay, okay, uh, okay, yeah. surdo is uh, left handed. Handed, okay, left handed. And, and, and diestro is right-handed. Right -handed. Okay. okay. And yeah, that's what I heard, that, that 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 they use the left hand to clean themselves when after they go to the bathroom. Okay, so, but, yes. but I don't know if it's true. Okay, that's what I heard. Okay. okay, well, so in Egypt, don't eat anything with your left hand, okay? Even if you are left-handed, don't do it. Always use your right hand because it's apparently not nice. And the last one, it is, please, Thailand. In Thailand, mm -hmm. never touch, never touch anyone, especially a shine on the hair. Never touch anyone on the head, right? Especially a child. So apparently, for the Thai or for Thai people, this is particularly offensive. In El Salvador, this is normal, right? You see a kid and you say, "Ah, oh, you're so nice." Okay, you touch the head. Mm, nothing offensive about it. But if you do that in Thailand, you may get in big trouble because for them, this is a no, 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 no. Okay, you never touch a child on the head. You never touch anyone on the head, especially a child. So that's it. Okay, listen, it's nine and four, so we need to finish this class. I'm going to just call the tents one more time. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Okay. All right, just if you hear your name, let me know. Blanca Marisol, is Blanca Marisol here with us tonight? Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol, last call. Okay, um, is Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez? Yes, present. 
thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody, that's that's going to be it. Remember, we finish tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow's the last, the last day of this level. So we're going to try to cover the rest of the um, section, section number five. And we're going to do some exercises together. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you for your participation. I really enjoy this. I really like the fact that you've been uh, participating and, 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 and talking a lot. That's really nice, really cool. It, it makes the class better, okay? So um, good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.